all right so this is what we're on today 15 different bloodlines in the nasuverse that you have to know and if we're just being honest most of these families probably deserve a video in their own right but this is just meant to be used as a summary so first up we have the tosica family they are one of the three great founding families of the original holy grail war their job was to supply spiritual land for the war itself they've been around for 200 years specialize in jewel mage craft and they take a lot of value in martial arts when they first started they weren't that good but through the years their bloodline has evolved from one of the least formidable to receiving props from the grand wizard himself zelrich as of right now the current head is ren tosica aka thighs for the guys next up we have one of the three great noble families of the clock tower the barthomoloi now these people are the high and mighty side of the mages when they come through they expect a red carpet rolled out and for you to kiss their toes and anything else would be absolute disrespect these people take so much pride in their own family name that their real name doesn't even really matter to them their current head right now is lorelei she is one of the greatest magi in the modern world her level is just on the brink of true magic and she has more magic circuits than the clock tower's headmaster Keep in mind that this headmaster has been alive for over 2,000 years. Her family takes very high value in being nobles. She is vice director at the clock tower. She is the lord of the department of policies. And just to get a hint of what type of level she's on, she has the same title, Grand Wizard, as the magician Zelrich. Lorelei believes that if you can't cast on the level of true magic, you shouldn't even be speaking her name. You're a bum. We have nothing to talk about. That being said, Zelrich is one of the only mages that she reveres. Next, we have the Animosphere. I'm sure you guys are quite familiar with this one. One of the most recent heads was Marsberry Animosphere, and he played a tremendous role in the story of grand order and he's one of the 12 lords of the clock tower his field of study was astrology he taught kirstaria who is a primary antagonist for grand order right now and he's responsible for founding the caudia system that allows us to summon spirits and time travel next we have the wotame family now the reason that these guys are so lethal is that they hold a lineage that's been around for over thousands of years going all the way back to the age of gods kirstaria himself has an unmodified magic crest that has a millennium worth of information at his disposal and after witnessing us trying to go against him later on in the lost belts you don't want to smoke with this guy as a matter of fact i don't want to be within five feet of this man next we have the matos one of the three founding families to the original holy grail war they have been around for 500 years they specialize in worm magic but after a while their line started to dwindle their magic crest was no longer being passed down and their most recent heir shinji was born with no magic circuits at all with nothing left for the family to do they decided to adopt sakura into their family to maintain what was left of the mato line when it comes to the grail war itself they are the ones that established the servant system and created the command spells for the masters to use along with them next we have the igmillennia family now this bloodline is actually a composite family meaning that it's comprised of mages from multiple bloodlines the most recent head was darnick prestone and he's been alive for almost 100 years he's been around for so long 
that he actually was a part of the third holy grail war as a master of the servant Fion. unfortunately for him he lost his connections among the nobles at the clock tower and could no longer excel his family the way that he wanted to at this point he started to take in a bunch of different families now with them having so many different bloodlines in their family it gave them the ability to specialize in a bunch of different fields so in a perfect world they probably could have been one of the strongest families out there but quantity isn't always better than quality and with quantity may come a lot of does as you saw in apocrypha and it doesn't help that the red team was fucking stacked Next, we have the one, the only, the Awazaki line. Let's start off with Alko Awazaki. Now, take a good look at this individual. Seems like a nice girl, right? This girl right here, at least Magus wise, can wipe the floor with half the Nasaverse with one leg glued to the ceiling. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I just knew that something was off when I first saw her attire. You know you in some trouble when one of the strongest mages in the verse pull up in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. You are about to get steamrolled. Nobody jokes around like that. They are a bloodline of six generations with Alco being the most recent head. How did she get that position? She stole it from her older sister Toko who by normal standards is supposed to be stronger than her but she lacks alco's trump card the fifth magic one of the strongest spells in the verse it's the type of spell that separates a magus from a true magician and it's the type of spell that you really don't want to run into by the book alco would be no better than a regular mage but since she knows the fifth magic she can manipulate her power to have more output than her older sister who has phenomenal magic circuits for her line and her sister toko is nothing to sleep on either don't get me wrong when toko faced off against a first rate magus in the Kara no kyoka world she opened up a suitcase and had a demon eat this man alive toko is out here putting mages on milk cartons now you see him now you don't a true wizard merlin would be proud next up we have the last three of the founding families of the original grail war the einsburns they've been around for a thousand years they specialize in the mage craft of alchemy and they have an unmatched talent for creating some of the best homunculi that you've ever seen the Igmalinia family actually took the blueprint for making their homunculi from the Einsburns. One of their worst homunculi is worth at least 100 magi. The most recent head is Iliusville von Einsburn, and the family itself is actually made of homunculi, which is why the successors, namely Iliusville and Irisville, look exactly like the original justice the initial goal for the einsburn family was to find another way to reach the third magic again however where they excel in creation they lack in actual fighting power which is why they ended up hiring kirisugu they are the ones that built the great grail and they're responsible for creating a vessel for the grail every time a war rolls around next we have the eltnums now the eltnums are a bloodline of alchemists that occupy the atlas faction of the mages association zepia eltnum was the family's most recent head in the fate world he managed to keep his sanity while he was doing his studies but in the Tsukuhime world he turned himself into a dead apostle ancestor since he felt that his research was being thresholded as a human he is the living and breathing manifestation of your worst nightmares no seriously if you don't like snakes he will probably toss you into a pit full of snakes just to fuck with you 
Furthermore, the Elnums created the Etherlight, which allows them to essentially hack and access a person's mind. Next, we have the Archibald family. You've seen it before. This family is among the elites and they are very good with the other nobles. Their prodigy Caniff was the ninth head of the family, but since he took an early out, Waver felt like it was his responsibility to take over the position since he's the reason that Caniff died in the first place with him still in his servant and all. Caniff was out here flexing with a nine generation family crest and a mystic code made of mercury to help him during battle. And don't let Fate Zero's depiction fool you, Caniff was actually nice, he just ran into a hard counter. Somebody should have told him Kirisugu plays dirty. Next we have the Trambilio. This is one of the three great noble families of the clock tower. In contrast to the nobles, the Trambelio family are actually the democratic faction of the clock tower. The current head, McDonald Trambelio, has a unique ability to recover his odd. Strong spells that would normally run him straight into the ground can get served for an hour straight before he even starts to feel the burn. You know something? I forfeit because there's no way that I'm blocking you for that long. Next, we have the Valuletta family, which is another one of the three great noble families of the Clock Tower. The current head is Enorai Valuletta, who is also a lord of the creation department. Just to get an idea of what she's working with, she's taught magecraft to the previously mentioned Toko Aozaki. She taught magecraft to Alba, the magus that Toko fought and she taught Soren Arya, who serves as an antagonist for Kara no Kyokai. And trust me when I say that this guy is busted. Of course, how could I forget the Fraga family? The Fraga are an extremely old family that go back into the Age of Gods. Since they showed great loyalty to the gods during that time, their family was rewarded with the noble phantasm. This noble phantasm is actually a sword of the god Lu, which is Ku Cullen's father. They were also granted the knowledge of mystic runes as well. As of right now, the only known descendant is Bazet, who, in case you didn't know, is an absolute beast out here. She was able to defeat Ku Cullen in one of the loops of Hollow Ataraxia with that very same noble phantasm. A mutual defeat, but a defeat all the same. Next, we have the Harways. Now, the Harways are a family from the extra world. They own 60% of the wealth that's in the world via their famous organization. The family's head is Leo Harway, and he's shown great promise ever since he was a child at three years old. He went through several surgeries of them burning information into his brain as a child just so they could increase his full potential. His in-world parameters are maxed out and he is indeed the strongest master to participate in his respective world that is at least until we show up. And finally, we have the Ainsworth family. Now this is a family from Fate Collide. Starting straight from the top, we have Darius Ainsworth, who was the first head of the Ainsworth family, but he didn't just stop there. Not only has this man lived for a thousand years, but he's also discovered a way to make his descendants his own personal host whenever he needs to jump into a new body. Right now, he's in the body of his descendant, Julian Ainsworth. Darius is the one that established the Ainsworth War, which entails masters using class cards to fight each other instead of using actual servants. And it looks like we made it. That is 15 families that you need and you have to know if you want to jump down this hole of Nasuverse, man. But we're just getting started. Like I said, this is definitely 
not all the information but i figured that this would be a good video to kick it off with of course you have honorable mentions like the escardos and the edelfelds but we'll get to those soon enough let me know what you guys think like the video if you enjoyed it shout out to all the patrons and i will be back with more tight moon content and i also want to give a special shout out to video gamer 75 who just dropped 200 on the channel that's what i'm talking about bro good looking out my guy it is your boy sire i'm out